This is the Universal Wrestling Podcast. Inside the ring. Outside the ring. It's all here. We're talking about the greatest sport of all, professional wrestling. Now here's your host, the cream of the crop, Nick Dieter. Come on. Welcome back to the Universal Wrestling Podcast. My name is Nick Dieterding. You may be asking, Nick, why the hell did you do that? Well, we have a very special guest on the program, Tony Chimmel, the living legend himself. He joins me and Chris Dunn. Chris Dunn returns for the first time in a couple months. Really good conversation. It was good to see Chris. It was good to meet Tony. Um, this guy, Tony Chimmel, a living legend, held so many different positions, so many different hats with the company for over 37 years. I really think you'll like this uh, this conversation. So without further ado, let's get to the interview with Tony Chimmel. There you go. We're recording. Tony, how you doing? Good. How are you doing? Good, good, Thanks good. Two guys from uh, New Jersey, right? You, you still living in Jersey? No, no. We moved to Florida. Actually, I, li- I grew up in Jer- South Jersey. Me too. And lived okay. There for, for about 45 years. My wife is from Wilkesbury. Oh, okay. That's where, that's where her parents, Wilkesbury, Pennsylvania. So that's where her parents were. So after a few years of marriage, we decided to move in between. So we ended up moving around maybe 40 miles north of Philadelphia. And I lived there for 15 years. And then got it. Once the kids got old enough and out of the house, we moved down here to Florida. So uh, we're down here in Fort Myers, Florida, loving it. Nice, nice. I was just watching Mike Kyoto was on Cafe de Nere, de Ren- yeah. Rene, Rene Dupree, his podcast. Uh-huh. And he said he did the same thing. He moved to like Texas and now he settled down in Florida, I guess. Yeah, you know, he grew up right just a few blocks from me, like yes, in the next did. neighborhood yeah. over and stuff like that. So, you know, we obviously we worked together for a long time and all that yeah. too. You know what he brought up during the uh, the podcast that uh, they, uh, Renee brought up the Montreal screw job. Um, you t- or uh, Mike said that he was in the back with you and you guys were talking. Do you remember any of that? The only thing I really remember about that is um, during the day, Earl came to me like this was maybe an hour or two before the show started or something. He said. Uh, he gave me the car keys to his, their rental car. And he said, Chimmel, make sure that you give these to David and make sure you give them to David. Yeah. Okay. The car keys. So I, at the time I didn't know, I guess his plan was, you know, as soon as the match is over, head right to the car and get in the car and get out yeah. of Dodge yeah. or get out of Montreal. But uh, yeah, I didn't know it at the time, but I remember him. Uh, I remember Earl telling me to give the keys to David. So, yeah. Yeah, I don't know what Mike said, but he said you and him had a conversation or you, you guys were together or something backstage. Yeah, not sure. I don't know what he said, so I'm yeah. not sure, really. Yeah. Uh, we talked a little bit off air. Do you still watch the current product? No. 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 I haven't, no. I haven't probably haven't watched in like two years. I mean, I did watch a few weeks ago when Vince was going to kick off the show. Yeah. And, you know, I wanted to see what Vince was going to do or say. And obviously that was about 30 seconds of nothing. And then yeah. I clicked back to the Mets game or something. I don't the know. The Mets. Yeah. I'm yeah. watching the Phils right now. They're getting, uh, they're kicking butt right now. 7 2. They're beating Atlanta. Yes, yeah, sir. Good. We needed it. I yeah. need that. <laughs> yeah. We need to take at least two. Are you a Phillies fan? Yeah. Born and raised Eagles, Phillies, Sixers, Flyers. I like the Flyers, but they're yeah. brutal. But, uh, yeah. Last this year was awful. Yeah, I know. I mean, I know. you brought up Vince. We don't have to get into the politics. That's not what this podcast is about. But Triple H, Stephanie McMahon, Nick Khan, you know, they, you know, they, they took over. What are your thoughts on that? Well, I was never somebody told me once that they don't see Vince retiring. He's not the kind of guy that's going to go and just hang out on a beach and relax the last 10 years of his life or whatever, or more. But uh, I don't know. He can say he's retired. That's fine. I still think that he's going to have some sort of input. The phone's going to ring. They're going to say, what do we do here? What do you think we should do there? He'll give his advice and stuff like that. So I, I don't, I don't ever see him really totally not ever doing anything with that company. But obviously, he's supposedly not in charge anymore, which I think is probably a breath of fresh air to a lot of people. And, yeah. Uh, 
but you know, I'm very grateful to Vince. He's, you know, he stood by me and he was always a good guy to me. And, uh, he gave me a career and a job for 38 years. So, you know, I can't yeah. really complain. Yeah. They said he still has majority of the shares, but I, I kind of feel the same way as what you said when it comes to, you know, he's watching raw and he doesn't like something, you know, <laughs> he's going to call Steph or triple H or whatever. But again, right. breath of fresh yeah. air. I'm with you on that one. Yeah. I, you know, I think Hunter's a breath of fresh air as far as that's concerned, you know, yeah. and, and all that, but I, you know, I have like I said, I haven't really watched in the last couple of years. It, it, it doesn't really interest me all that much. Uh, I don't know if I'm not working for the company. Yeah, you know. Yeah, no, I hear that, and it, it's funny because you you thanked uh, Vince McMahon, but there's something you do on Twitter as well. You thank a lot of people today. Uh, the past few weeks, it was uh, Shane, Mickey James, Brock Lesnar. It's just again, we're gonna go back to that. Uh, that phrase, a breath of fresh air to see someone do that. What, what, what started, why did you start doing that? Cause it's, <laughs> it's, well, because once I, once I got laid off or fired or whatever you want to call it, you know, I, I had to start, you know, trying to promote myself or do something, you know, yeah, make a couple bucks somewhere on the side or something, you know, and I never was into social media. I'm not a big fan of it. I'm not even really a big fan of podcasts or any of this stuff. But I realized that it's kind of a necessary evil in this day and age. Yeah. And I wanted to go on Twitter. And I had advice from friends and people that know me or like, you know, Chimmel, you can't be Chimmel when you're on Twitter, you know. And I'm like, well, that's no fun, you know, yeah. if I can't be myself or, or do what I want to do. And I said, I d definitely don't want to go on there and then do something and be in trouble or, you know, heaven forbid you say something and, you know, half the people are going to hate you and half the people are going to like you. Yeah. So I figured, well, what can I do that's on there? And just I said, you know what, I'll just thank somebody every day because there's a, tons of people to thank. Yeah. And Although I, I feel like I'm kind of running out of WWE people. <laughs> I'm, not running, I'm not running out of people, but I'm running no, out of no, WWE no, no. people. Yeah. Uh, I've been doing this for over a year, I think, probably. Yeah. Yeah, man. It's and, a... uh, Go ahead. My bad. Yeah, it's kind of tough, you know, thinking of a new person every day to thank because there's so many people that over the years that have made, yeah. you know, helped me out or done something for me or worked with me or worked for me or did whatever, yeah. you know. And, you know, it's just something nice to do where you're not going to get in any trouble and somebody else can get on there. And once in a while, I can promote my cameos or chimios and stuff like that. Which yeah, why not? Anybody wants, wants a chimio, as I call it, feel free to go on Cameo and look me up or it's on my profile page on uh, Twitter as well. Nice. I see in the background 35 years. It's been more than that, right? Yeah, I got that when I was there 35 years. Actually, yeah. it was 30 by the time I got it, but yeah, that was her 30, 38 altogether. You've the worn, way I count it. Yeah, you've worn so many hats and so many different responsibilities. What were some of your favorite positions or titles that you had that you held and uh vice versa? What were some of the you know the ones you didn't really enjoy the well, least? Well when I first started out it was just setting the ring up and that's yeah. all we did you know was drive the truck and set the ring up you know and then we started, you know, as the business progressed and we got to move on, the drives got longer because the business was expanding. And instead of driving to, from, you know, from from the Philly area to Baltimore or Scranton yeah. or Washington, we're going to, you know, Pittsburgh and Cleveland and, you know, Pensacola, Florida or whatever. <clears throat> so, you know, the truck driving thing expanded a lot and, you know, you'd be driving for two or three days before you get to a show and then you do a couple shows and then you're two or three days back, you know? Yeah. So I've done so many things there. I, you know, a truck driver, ring announcer, ring crew guy. Yeah. I played the music. We took jackets. Uh, we time kept, uh, you know, we did everything back then. Yeah. We even ran a camera at a time at times where they wanted to set up a camera so you could see, you know, what was what was going on during the matches and all that. And you know, it's all been fun. So Yeah. I kinda liked I kind of liked working in the production office, you know, obviously announcing was a, a lot of fun too. But you know, after after years and years and years, you kinda 
get a little tired of it, you know, and yeah. uh, of whatever you're doing. But it, it was nice, and they were all great jobs at, at at some point in time, the announcing and the, you know. But sometimes it just gets a lot when you're on the road, you know, 20, 24 days a, a month, and yeah. you know, for 20, 30 years, you know, it got a bit much at times. So yeah, somebody yeah. was just asked. Somebody was just asking me, you know, like, do you miss do you miss the business and stuff like that? Well, I don't miss the travel, but I miss the frequent flyer miles and the hotel points. Yeah, I don't miss the job, but I miss the friends there. You yeah, know? Absolutely. Yeah. So, you yeah. know, but I still keep in contact with some people and, you know, yeah. it's nice. Who do you still keep in contact with? Um, I'm still friends with uh, some of the merch guys. Um, you know, there's a, a director there, Marty Miller. I'm friends with him still. And some of the still photo guys. Uh Kyoto, obviously, I'm still nice. in contact with. Jersey boys. Yeah, I uh, keep in contact with Jimmy Corderas. I love his little uh, ref. And oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, he's that's that, great. He, he's the best. I, I told him, I said, you know, this ref and rant thing, you were doing that back when we were in a car, only it didn't last a minute. It was lasting for like three hours. Yeah. We would solve all of, all of, every single problem in the business and in the world, you know, on car rides. But uh, he's got a great mind for the business, and I, yeah, love, I love hearing his ref and rants. That's cool. Yeah. I'm going to go back in time, 2005, 2007, Mr. Kennedy – is involved in a little mini feud with Tony Chimmel. You're not pro- <laughs> you're not pronouncing his name correctly. Can you take me through that? How did that come to be? You know, I don't know. That was his gimmick. I guess he announced he announced his name, or I would do it, and yeah. then I guess he'd come in the ring and grab the mic and do his own announcement. You know, yep. so uh, it just worked out like that, and. Uh, you know, he we used to play around and joke around a lot with it and stuff like that. So, uh, yeah. yeah, he was one of the, he was one of the, a very nice guy to me. Matter of fact, I don't think I ever thanked him. I like should write that down. Thank you. There Mr. you go, Kennedy. Mr. <laughs> Kennedy. He was actually just on Chris Van Fleet's podcast. That's why I brought it up. I know oh, you okay. were on what, there. Did he me? <laughs> uh, you know what? I don't know. I just know they talked about his gimmick and you know how yeah. he uh, became Mr. Kennedy and all that. Yeah, he's a he's a nice guy. Yeah, yeah, that's that's cool. Um, so a lot of people, you know, superstars, wrestlers, whatever you want to call them, they have that WrestleMania moment. What was your so to say WrestleMania moment? Even if it wasn't at WrestleMania, if it was a moment in your career that you were like, you know, God damn, this is awesome. Well, I think when I went out to Edge at the Hall of Fame, that was pretty nice. I kind of like that. And, you know, Beth, I got to thank Beth for that because she was the one, I think, that came up with the idea. Yeah. Got me to do that, you know, or asked me to do it or wanted me to do it. So that was pretty nice. You know, I always liked that. That was a good moment. Obviously, announcing Edge for all those times was pretty good. I loved announcing Cena and his stuff. Uh, Some of the other things that I really enjoy that I – you know, I don't remember, but I see him pop up every once in a while or something. Is when the Dudley Boys put me through the table, when yeah. the Boogeyman made me eat the worms, <laughs> uh, when me, me and Fink went at it, uh, you know, in a tuxedo match or whatever. That yeah. was pretty cool. So, you know, I had many great moments, but those are, those are a few of the really good ones. Chris, are you there? Sure I am. Uh, hey, Chimmel, how are you? How's your hush money treating you? It's my love. Yeah, I wish it was in there. How are you doing? Thank you, buddy. How are you? Doing Go good. Uh, sorry, I appreciate you guys rescheduling this twice and then letting me be on late over her phone. <laughs> uh, it's so good to hear your, your voice, Tony. How have you been? I have been fantastic. Le- living life down here in Florida and loving every minute of it. Well, you know, when uh, you were talking about announcing Edge at the Hall of Fame, it made me think of the first time I really got to know you um, when I was producing my first Hall of, Main, Hall, Hall of Fame segment, my first Hall of Fame segment with Beth Phoenix. Um, and she asked that during her speech, when she shouted out Edge, uh, you came out and did your Edge introduction. Right. 
And uh, we got to rehearsal, and like unlike um, you know a Raw or a SmackDown, you don't really have time to prep Vince. Uh, and it was one of those moments where he's trying to run through it, and I I had sp- spoke to Kevin Dunn and the truck, and everyone knew. And then when we got to it, and I was about to tell Vince he wanted to move on, and I explained to him uh, what you were going to do, and he was about to yell at me because he doesn't like surprises. <laughs> but what the hell? On, yeah, he was like he was very he was very perturbed. Uh, but it was great because we were on stage. He had a headset on that went to everyone so they could hear him, and there were about a hundred people in arena watching the rehearsal. So you know he calmed himself down and was like, "Don't you think you should have told me Schimmel was going to come out?" Um, as I saw burning anger because <laughs> he couldn't yell at me in the moment. Well, it's funny, you know, a lot of times he's the last guy to know. Everybody else knows but him, and we all know who's going to make the decision on, on everything there. Yeah. You know, it's him. Yeah, it's just, you know, that, that show doesn't have a production meeting, so you can't run him through creative for it until, you know, yeah. you're actually doing the thing. Uh, but, yeah, I remember, like, going into it, you're like, is Vince going to be okay with this? And I was like, I guess we'll see. And yeah. <laughs> he, he was not at first. <laughs> um, but yeah, Tony, like I, you know, Nick reached out because, um, you know, I did a bunch of podcasts for him or with him uh, to do interviews for the, you know, Leukemia and Lymphoma Society. Um, and he, he's mentioned some other people uh, to do interviews with, which is kind of hard with my schedule at the moment, but when he mentioned you, I definitely wanted to hop on and say hello because uh, when I was at WWE, you are were one of the most beloved people uh, by really everyone, except for maybe JBL. But <laughs> everyone, um, everyone uh, loves you really much, like so much. And uh, you know, you even now, you your your niece uh, Blake Chimmel is now uh, becoming an excellent producer there, and yeah, you're just Blake, one of the Blake, really most. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, one like of the well, uh, yeah, and just a, a top-notch producer, and you know, few people have kind of been at WWE as long as you, and seen all the generations kind of change throughout the years. Yeah, it's it was a nice long run, uh, one that I was happy to be a part of. You know, thinking of that thing with Vince at the Hall of Fame. You know, after we did that rehearsal, he was like uh, Chimmel. He said. Uh, after you're done announcing Edge, what I want you to do is start at the back of the stage and run all the way to the front of the stage and dive off. <laughs> I'm, like, I'm, I'm like, I'm not doing that. Yeah, yeah. Like, come on. <laughs> so, like I said earlier, he's always he's always treated me nice. I never had an issue with Vince, and you know, he gave me 38 great years. So, you yeah. know. Well, that's no pretty cool place. too. I, I don't know too much about it, but you said Blake Chimmel, and Blake Cohen, my sister's kid. Okay, yeah, okay. Her last name is Cohen, but yeah, she, I got her the I, gig. I like to th- I like to think she's Blake Chimmel. <laughs> <laughs> He's going to get a lot of heat if you call her that. <laughs> <laughs> but that's uh, I don't true. work there anymore. So, I don't work there anymore, so she can have her heat. Yeah, I'd love to hear that uh, go over headset in the truck. That would be nice. Well, that's a pretty cool feeling too, you know, that you still have, you have family there. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. And uh, yeah, it's real nice. And even my kids, they worked in catering for a little bit and stuff like that when they were teenagers and all that. So, so, you know, and even my grandson, he came with me one show to Philly, this little paper over here, the little white piece of paper. Yeah. He came with me to work in Philly one day and uh, worked in the production office and he, and my boss, Sean, says, well, Chimmel, you're going to pay him, right? And I'm like, what do you mean? He's like seven years old. <laughs> <laughs> and he's like, yeah, give him some money out of, out, of the, out of the till, you know, and have him fill out a little piece of paper to work and all that. And let me see what day that was. That was March 8th of uh, 2020. Huh. <laughs> and um, he paid 20 bucks for helping me in the production office. You got to talk on a walkie-talkie and all that. And, He's nine years old now. That's so, amazing. yeah. Let me ask you this, Tony. Um, Thirty-eight years, really long time. Um, who's the biggest character backstage that you dealt with? 
As far as uh, like what? Just I guess uh, like most like most entertaining person backstage. That's a, a wrestler. I'm like, a huge you know, fan of Santino Morella. Huge fan. Inside the ring and in backstage as well. I mean, he could entertain me just by talking to him and just the things that he did and the way he talked and things that he things that he did inside the ring and out. And, you know, it, when I'm at ringside for so many years, you know, I, it, you kind of get bored with a lot of stuff. But watching him like work and wrestle, he's entertaining and you don't necessarily have to entertain me in the wrestling business by being a good wrestler. You just need to entertain me. Whether yeah. you're making me laugh or or whatever, you know, I just want to have a good time. And when you're sitting there watching eight matches a day, four or five days a week for 25 years, yeah. you know, a backdrop isn't going to entertain me. But what Santino used to do would entertain me inside the ring and then backstage too. Yeah. He was always good, you know. And Cena was always a good guy to talk to and play cards and you know hang out with and. You know, Taker was great, and you know Austin. All those big guys have, have, were really good. You know, yeah. have you been able to uh, watch the A and E documentaries, the bios? Uh, no, I've seen some of that. Um, well, what's the thing on Netflix? I, th- I think or Vice or something. The Vice. dark side of the oh, 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 yes, yes, yes. Yeah, I've seen some of those. The A- the AEW stuff. I haven't seen any of that. I heard. Do who, they just have Taker on or somebody on? I think it was about or yeah, I think that was A and E, right? Yeah, Chris? A A and E, not A W. Yeah, A W. <laughs> no, yeah. yeah. But yeah, A and E. But did they do Taker? Who, who were they doing? Yeah, I think? yeah, they did they, Taker. They did there Taker. Was somebody else though, that I was clicking around and and they were doing. I forget who it was, but. I think it was I don't know. I haven't, I haven't really got to watch any of those things. Yeah. I, I kind of got a feeling that's a WWE thing, right? Yeah. It's got to be. So they're going to have their slant on everything. So they're going to they're going to give you what they want you to see. You know? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Which is I, I like to watch sometimes the other side of the coin and see and see what the other. I know what WWE is going to do. Yeah. I, I want to see what you know another point of view or something. So. Yeah. And I think that's what made Vice so entertaining. You know. Yeah, there was a lot of stuff in there. I'm like, oh, I remember I remember when that happened. Oh, I don't remember that, though. Yeah. You know, I didn't know yeah. that happened. Yeah. Because, uh, you know, a lot of that stuff I was around for and some of the stuff, like, I didn't even I didn't even know some of these people. And I'm like, yeah. damn. But you were on the plane ride to hell. No, I was not. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I was not. Thank yeah. God. Good. Good. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, Chris brought up. Go ahead, Chris. My bad. You're good. All right. Well, I, oh no, you were going to ask about JBL, who who's done this podcast too. Yes. Um, I oh think, yeah, JBL. Yeah. I, I though I think he will jokingly end his friendship with me once he hears you're on this podcast with me. But <laughs> <laughs> don't worry, I get I get the weekly text, if not more than that, to kill myself or whatever. <laughs> so. Jesus. Yeah. So, you... JBL. JBL has been very good to me. Uh, and I know he loves me, yeah. which I hope he gets to hear that, but, uh, <laughs> yeah, he's been very good to me and he's been helpful to me even with outside of the stuff, like doing his podcast or whatever, you know? Oh, that's, oh yes. Yes. Have you liked him yet on well, Twitter? You know what? I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. I might may have to make him wait. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, that's a good one. I did get him in too. So I got Kennedy and JBL. Yeah. All right. I'm a little hurt that you didn't follow me back on Twitter, Chimmel. You know what? I'm a leader. I'm not a follower. I, I think I've I think I follow like 19 people. I don't know. Yeah. Am I supposed to follow more people? I get on my Twitter thing and I look and it's Matt Cordona on everything. <laughs> and let's just kind of today. I'm like, what what are you talking about? And then he's like, I I can't even make heads or tails of who he's wrestling for or or how many different organizations is he working for? He's in different places all the time. And yeah, I, I don't know. He's got action. Fi- he's got action figures or I, I don't know what, I don't yeah. know. I can't make heads or tails on most of this stuff. <laughs> you know? 
So it's so um, also I just as you can hear me text as you can hear me typing on my phone. Um, I just received a text from uh, Thomas Cullen. Um, Tommy Cullen. The, uh, yeah, one of the uh, broyer bros at WWE. But uh, yeah. he 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 wanted me to uh, say he misses you. I love Tommy. Tommy is a great guy and a huge baseball fan. His yeah. Orioles suck, but you know. They're doing pretty good this year. But, yeah, I love Tommy. Tell Tommy that he needs to uh, he needs to watch the documentary by Ken Burns, Baseball. He's always promised me he's going to do that. And I know it's like 20 hours long, but uh, he needs to do that. Yeah, I'm going to force him to – since, since I said his name, he's probably going to uh, download the podcast because, you know, He's a little vain, <laughs> uh, so I rather I rather get the listen. Um, so he has to sit through the whole podcast to hear that. There you go. Yeah, please, there you go. Please keep, please, please, Nick, keep this in for Tommy. And also, uh, when I asked uh, Chimmel about the pile of hush money he's sitting on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, if anyone should get three million dollars, it should be me. <laughs> oh shit, that's Brother. funny. You brought up JBL. I got to ask, what are some of your favorite ribs? doesn't have to be, you know, with JBL, just in general. Uh, well, there was one time with JBL. Of course. That, uh, <laughs> we were overseas. We were overseas, and he was reffing – or not reffing. He's wrestling in some tag team match. And uh, he was the champ at the time. And I'm holding his belt. And for some reason, I don't know, I cut my finger on the belt – or something like that. So I asked one of the guys that's sitting at uh, at ringside. I said, "Hey, go in the back and get the doc and the trainer, you know, because I think <laughs> I might need a band aid for this cut on my." F- yeah. I mean, I'm dripping like a little bit of blood. Yeah. So they come out, and JBL's in the corner, you know, waiting for a tag or something. He's looking at the doc and the trainer come out, and he's like, "What the hell is going on?" And there I am with my finger and a little bit of blood, you know, yeah. and they're like. They're like putting a Band-Aid on my finger. I'm looking at JBL like, ow, this hurts so much. Yeah. Meanwhile, he's taking bumps in the ring and, yeah, yeah. and getting bruises and all that. And he was just like hot about that. So uh, that was pretty good. I like that. Yeah. You know? That's funny. Yeah. T- uh, Tony, what did you think of, you know, you were always around everything. Um, what do you think about the creative process while you're there at WWE from outside looking in? Uh, you know, I always thought that they just overproduced everything, you know, it, it was always live TV, but it was, it just seemed like it was always cookie cutter stuff. And it was always, uh, you know, not to nitpick, but everything ran by Vince. And it's like, if there was a shadow in the background, it was a big deal, you know, if this, and I know Vince is a stickler on, uh, minor little details and paying attention to details and who am I to say it's worked for so many years, you know, yeah. but I mean, it, it just seemed like everything was overproduced and everything was just like, you know, this isn't right. This is wrong, you know, or you can't say fans, you got to say universe or whatever, you know, and yeah, they're not, they're not agents, they're producers. And, you know, it's not, you know, just little things like that. I'm like, Joe Schmo sitting at home doesn't care. Joe Schmo is not noticing that, you know? <laughs> yeah. Uh, your wrestling fan isn't looking at that. If the wrestling fan is looking at the one empty seat across from hard camera and not want, paying attention to what's in the ring, it, does it matter? You know? Yeah. I mean, I look at it like if I was a fan of wrestling, I wouldn't care. I'm a fan of the Mets. I'm watching the Mets game. Whether there's 38 people behind the catcher or – Nobody's behind a catcher. I'm watching the team. I'm watching the players, which is what you're selling. And I just thought it was a, a lot of it was just overproduced as far as I'm concerned. But, yeah. you know, like I said, you can't argue with the success that he's had and, and the things that he's done. So, you know, yeah. who might have seen any of that, you know? Yeah. And I feel like, you know, a lot of fans, including me, say the same thing. It's overproduced. But then again, we're with you. You know, he's got to where he's at for some reason. Right, right. He's yeah. got a he's got a great mind in wrestling, you know, and I always said that. But yeah, it's just like I mean, if you're watching a backstage thing and there's, you know, 
first there was like nobody in the background, you know, they used to have nobody in the background of any of these background shots. And, you know, you're in an arena with 20,000 people and you're shooting backstage and there's like, there's nobody else backstage, <laughs> yeah. you know, Not, and, you know, like, it's like when you watch, when you watch uh, the post game show of a baseball game or the Super Bowl or something like yeah, that, yeah. and they're doing the post game show and they're, they're talking and in the back you see people cleaning the seats and stuff like that, that would never happen in WWE. You would never yeah. see that. I mean, there's nobody clean seats, you know, <laughs> they just magically get cleaned, you know, yeah. I mean, but it's like, are you really? And sometimes we joke around watching something on TV and we're watching the game or we're watching something. Like, oh, I can't watch this anymore. You see, there's a guy eating a hot dog in the stands. I cannot watch that. You know? <laughs> so, I mean, yeah, yeah that, that was that was, you know, just a little overproduced as far as I'm concerned. But, you know, I would love to what hear what what you think, Chris. So I think like. I, I think there are issues with there have been issues with the creative process. I don't necessarily think it's all the issues that the fans think. I think you know you kind of get. I, I think the lack of week to week storytelling because um, of how Vince is that is probably the biggest issue: dropping and starting storylines, uh, or starting and dropping storylines. Like that's you're investing your time in something and you're not getting a payoff. So that obviously sucks. You know. I think, like, depending who it is, like, a lot of fans feel like, you know, the writers shouldn't be writing these these characters, these promos, any of this stuff. With that being said, like, if you're somebody like Seth Rollins who really knows his character, knows his strengths and weaknesses, like, the times I was lucky enough to produce Seth, I would go out there with him, or he would go out there, we would prep the segment together, and I would re we would talk about the story. Um, I would really only know the lines for camera cues. Because, like, we both needed to know that for the segment, and I needed to tell the truck that. Yeah, yeah. And I had the trust in Seth to, A, deliver a big money promo um, and be on time. Uh, because he is a top-notch performer. Same thing with Roman, who I, you know, I didn't have that many chances to work with, but the times I did, nailed it. Uh, same thing with Cena, the times I got to work with him. Uh, but there are other wrestlers who just, are, it's not their strength. I mean, I will always cite, like, the AEW show I went to in L.A. where, you know, Ember Moon finally, like, had the chance to say what she wanted to say and, like, goes out there and, like, let's keep it 100. Um, uh, you know, so it's, it's just, uh, it's... Yeah. It, yeah, it's like a case-by-case -case dependency. Um, and I completely under... I think, you know... I think it's tough. It's like there are good things and there are bad things about it. I think the creative process, though, under Hunter, having worked with him at NXT, is going to significantly improve. Yeah. Yeah. Tony, can you uh, take us through like a day of being an announcer? Like what, what starts and what, how does it end? Well, there's different times because there was times when I was announcing – when I would also be driving the truck and setting the oh, ring yeah. up at like house shows, then there were times when I never just announced. That's what I don't get these these people that are announcers <laughs> now. It's like, yeah, that's all you do is announce. I mean, yeah, to me that was you know, I don't know, one third of the job or whatever. There were times that I worked in a production office and was an announcer. There were times I worked at TV as a ring crew guy and was the announcer and stuff like that, but. Typically, I'd do whatever I was doing in the day, whether that was, you know, setting the ring up at a house show where we'd get there typically around, you know, one o'clock in the afternoon. That's get to the arena. Now, where we were the night before, I don't know how far we drove. You know, it all depend. We might have to, you know, drive to one or two in the morning and then get up at 10 and drive another couple hours or something to the next show. Get there at one o'clock, set the ring up, you know, it'd be done maybe around three. Uh, have a little bit of downtime, go get something to eat, uh, play some cards maybe. And then, you know, the show starts at 7.30 and announce the show and uh, tear the ring down and go on to the next town. You know, when I was at TV, I typically, when I was working in a production office, we typically on, say, the East Coast would get into 
arena around seven o'clock in the morning and I do my duties there, make sure rooms are uh, picked out and located. You know, we go over stuff with the runners, set up the production office, set up some other rooms, Vince's office, had to set up the writer's room and talent relations and all that. And, and then work in the production office till, I don't know, around four o'clock. And I'd go sit out by the ring and sit and watch rehearsals for two hours that barely ever <laughs> happened. <laughs> and then go back, get dressed and announce the show. Yeah. So, uh, it's a long you know. day. Oh yeah. And then you, after the show, it's a go, long day. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, <laughs> at, it's a long I, week. So, <laughs> yeah. Was it at, Tra at Trader Joe's, which I love working for, you know, after I was there for a few months, the, the boss comes to me. He's like, is everything OK? You know, you you like it here. Everything's working out. I'm like, she's like, it's not too much or anything like that. I'm like, no, I'm like, I'm only working eight hours a day. <laughs> He's like, why did you do? More? I said, yeah, WWE. I would go into an arena at like seven o'clock in the morning and not leave until midnight. And she'd be like, really? I'm like, well, yeah, it's, a TV. it's not like, you know, it's just a three hour TV show. Yeah. I mean, you're there eight, 10 hours before and an hour or two afterwards. So it's like a 16 or 18 hour day. And I'm like, here, you, you go in, do your eight hours and then leave. So yeah. I'm like, this is great. It's like a half a day almost. But, you know, it is what it is. Yeah, that's life. Chris, I hey, th Tony. Uh, go ahead. Chris, yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Nick. No, you're good. We're winding down, right, Tony? What do we got? Yeah, we're okay. We can go another 10 minutes or so. Okay. Go ahead, Chris. Oh, great. Uh, so, you know, Tony, you were ringside for so many great moments um, that I think many fans would have loved to have been at. And, like, you know, many fans look back on very fondly. What was the coolest thing that you have front row seat for when you were a ring announcer? Uh, oh, let me see. I'm trying to think because, you know, when, when you ask that question, I know there's a lot of good things, <laughs> but geez, I, I remember like some bad things too. Like I remember when draws, I was sitting at ringside when, oh, yeah. uh, when he got paralyzed, that was horrible. Uh, the Owen thing, I wasn't, I wasn't at ringside. I remember being in gorilla when that happened. Uh, you know, probably one of the coolest things for me is when I got, uh, what is it? Uh, kicked by Shawn Michaels at WrestleMania with Brett. And that, that, uh, that was pretty cool. I got taken out on a stretcher <laughs> and, uh, I remember Brett coming up to me. This was probably about 15 years later after that happened. And he's like, you know, Chimla, I always wanted to thank you for that spot that you did. He's like, because that was like an hour match. And he's like, typically in those matches, there's like a lull, you know, in the action and something that you need to need to kick start it or whatever and, and get your second wind. And he's like, that did it for us in that match. And uh, he thanked me for that, which I thought was very nice. Brett was always a great guy. And, yeah. Uh, you know, so are you saying, are, are you essentially saying it without saying it, Trimble, that you main evented WrestleMania? <laughs> <laughs> well, it was, one of the few times I, it was one of the very few times that I got a bonus, I'll tell you that. <laughs> <laughs> I got a bonus for taking <laughs> but yeah, so uh, yeah, I guess I main event WrestleMania and uh, I'm undefeated too. I beat Howard Finkel, so I'm there you go. Out. You and uh, <laughs> there you go. Yeah, I guess like I guess this is kind of like this is probably a dark a dark rabbit hole to go down, but I think it's and maybe if it's too dark, we cut it out of the podcast. But uh, you know, Chimel, you just mentioned being in Gorilla when unfortunately the the Owen tragedy happened. Yeah. What was that like in Gorilla? Like it's nothing like that has happened. Yeah, or after like that. Yeah, WWE is never. I, I, and if you don't feel comfortable talking talking about it, it's all, all good. Yeah, absolutely. Well, I have a lot of fond memories of Owen too, and Owen was a great guy, you know. And it was sad what happened. And uh, um, yeah, I was in Gorilla. I don't know if I was taking jackets then or what I was doing, but I was at Gorilla. I was probably taking jackets back then, and uh, 
I just remember somebody like and by jackets you mean like and by jackets you mean like you know when wrestlers go to the rings you're grabbing their jackets yeah yeah kind of like you know when you'd get Undertaker's hat and jacket and so it used to be an actual job job you know yeah and uh, <clears throat> Typically, I'd be dressed up in a suit to do it, you know, but anyway. But, uh, yeah, I was in Gorilla, and I just, you know, they were saying, oh, he fell, he fell, and stuff like that. And uh, and I remember Jerry Lawler just coming back in Gorilla, and he was saying, you know, oh, I, I think that he's dead, you know. And then we were just like, oh, brother, you know. And then they, were, they wheeled him on the stretcher and wheeled him back through Gorilla there, and – that was a hard sight to see and stuff like that. And that was just a really horrible, horrible day. And, you know, he's such a nice guy. And uh, I actually met uh, Martha a few months ago when I was at an AEW show. And uh, I met her and talked to her for a little bit. And uh, she's a very nice lady, too. And uh, yeah. talked to her a little bit about that and stuff. So. Uh, that was nice, but yeah, that was that was a tough day, you know. Yeah. Um, did did you see anything change at WWE at the time after that happened? Well, I know they've never, they've never they've never brought somebody down from the rafters again, and they still haven't. So that that changed, you know. Uh, I don't know if anything else changed. I mean, they've always been pretty safe on the things that they did. And, you know, that that match with Sean and Brett that I was talking about, you know, when Sean came down from the ceiling or from the, the top of the Anaheim uh, arena there and flew all the way down, Vince did that first in like the day before. So Vince practiced it and he did it first before Sean did it. So, yeah, you know. They're, they've always been pretty safe and, and, you know, had everything looked at. And, you know, that just was a freak accident, I guess, and a yeah. sad moment. Though. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, uh, Tony. I know, I know Corderas was in the ring for that. And there was another guy yeah. that used to work for us, Timmy Rogers, and he was sweeping the ring out. And I, they, those were two of the guys that were actually in the ring when that happened. So, Jeez. You know. Yeah, that's tough. Yeah. Um, Tony, I appreciate it. I know we're winding down here. A few uh, more questions. Um, sure. Favorite places to go. Favorite favorite things to do. What did you do? I mean, you've been you were you had such a long tenure with WWE. You saw so many places. Give me some of the cool things that you've been able to see or do. Well, I've been to the actual Taj Mahal, the one in Atlantic City, but also the one in India. <laughs> pretty cool nice yeah uh, i've been there too yeah, we, got, we got to go there uh that was pretty nice um we were actually on easter sunday we were in, in the old town of jerusalem in uh israel oh and that's we got cool. to walk, walk around the old town of uh jerusalem and see a lot of you know the wailing wall and other stuff like that that was pretty cool too. um i've seen pretty much everything in england you know the Big Ben, Parliament, all that stuff. I mean, when you travel like that many years, you know, you you see all that stuff. And, you know, my every time I'd be around my family, not my wife and kids, but like my sister and Blake and and although that side of the family, they'd be like, oh, it's so great. You get to travel here. And I'm like, you know what? It's not that great. I'd rather <laughs> be in Philly, you know? Yeah. <laughs> And they're like, oh, you get to go see all these places, you know, and, and you get to, and it, it is kind of nice and it, it, it is nice, yeah. you know, but traveling is a great thing and it's also a horrible thing as well, you yeah. know, and there's two sides to everything and, but uh, yeah, I did get to see a lot of cool things. Uh, I've driven, I've driven on Interstate 95 all the way from Holton, Maine up the top of Canada all the way down to Key West at some point in time in my life. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, you know, and a lot of great things in, uh, in the United States as well. Uh, you know, I'm not a huge fan of Texas, but uh, San Antonio and that river walk is pretty nice there. You know, uh, 
I'm not a big fan of California, <laughs> uh, but always love Florida. And, yeah, yeah. You know, there's a lot of great places that I've been to. Uh, Italy was nice. We saw the Coliseum, uh, the Vatican and all that stuff we got to see. So, but a lot of times it's like you travel and it's like, you know, you land in Australia or Japan or something and it's 5 a.m. in the morning and you have, they have breakfast for you. And then it's like, you know, you got matches at 7.30. So, you know, yeah. sitting in coach for 18 hours on a plane, you're not getting much sleep. So you go to bed for a little bit, you know. Yeah. And, you know, you, you don't really get a lot of time. You don't really get a lot of time to go see things, you know. So it's kind of rare. I mean, or you'd have to get up early in the morning, hopefully, if you're in the town that, you, that you're going to be working in that night. And you have, you know, a few hours during the day to go and see something. Yeah. You know, I, I always ask the market reps when we were over there, I'm like, you know, what? why don't we just like have a day off <laughs> or, you know, during the tour for everyone to recharge their batteries or yeah. you know, just to get accustomed to the to the time zone or whatever. And uh, I forget one of the market reps said, yeah, we asked Vince that question once. And I said, well, what did Vince say? They said, well, Vince said. How are we making any money if we're not running a show? <laughs> so when you're dealing with that, you know, we're not making any money. That's the yeah. bottom line. So, yeah. you know, you're running a show. But uh, it was fun, you know, and the travel was good. So that's great. Most of the time. Chris, Most of the time. do you got any other questions before we uh, end it? Now, uh, you know, just the uh... – for what it's worth, Tony, like the main reason I hopped on this is because I always appreciate what an incredibly good guy you are and hard worker you are. And, uh, you know, I I miss working with you, as I know a lot of people at WWE do, and I hope you're doing great. And just thank you for being you. Yeah, well, thanks, Chris. Yeah, I, I miss the people there. You know, I, like I was telling Nick, I don't necessarily miss the job. Uh, but I miss a lot of the people there, and it was fun. We always had fun at work because if you weren't laughing, you were going to be crying. So, you know, yeah. we always had fun there. And, you know, yeah, it got a little tiring at times. And, you know, like anything, you know, there's good and bad points to everything. But uh, it was a good run. And, you know, I thought I would never have any kind of life after WWE. But there is life, and it's good after WWE. And we're – we love living down here in Florida and we got it. We live in paradise and uh, the family can come and visit when they want. And uh, you know, I'm, I'm not working 22, 23 days a month and I'm not away from home. My wife has probably seen me more in the last two or three years than she has the first 30 years, you know? Yeah. So that's a good thing. And she hasn't killed me yet. So <laughs> yeah, I was going to ask. <laughs> That's funny. You know? So, yeah. yeah, everything's good. Well, Tony, Chris, again, thank you. Tony, how can the people find you? Give them what they want. Uh, I'm on Twitter. Uh, I'm also on Cameo. That's about it. And I call it Chimio because I'll yes. do my, my – Tony, uh, Tony how, much are you pay, how much are you charging me? Dude, it's only like 35 cameo. bucks, I think. It was 50 and then I'm like, well, let me drop my price to like 35 yeah. So it's only like 35 How often are you – Who's paying for these cameos? <laughs> Dude, I just announced some. These people are fantastic. I mean, they, you know, they asked me to, to do this, and I'm more than happy to do it. Yeah. I now this this guy just had a baby, and her, I forget her name was Quinn Quinn Teresa or something like that. And I introduced her into the world. You know, that's great. So I mean, I've introduced people as you know a superstar and all that stuff, and. Uh, <laughs> You know, wish him happy birthday. I could bury someone if you want, you know, tell them how crappy they are or whatever, yeah. you know. But uh, <laughs> That's it's, funny. Uh, I, I like it, you know. Yeah. It's, I'm, I'm not best technology-wise. I just set up my little iPhone and a, and a little light and get in front of it for a minute or two, and uh, that's it, you know. But everyone seems to be happy that gets it done. Yeah. You know, so I, I like you a lot and I think you're a great person, but it's really making me feel bad about life that you're making money off cameos. <laughs> <laughs> you know, people are telling me I should get my own podcast too. 
you know, but I'm like, I don't know. I don't know how to do that stuff. Like what you're doing, Nick, I wouldn't have a clue as to what that is. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And, yeah. you know, I just, I don't know. I, I don't see, I don't know. I, if it's not making me money, I don't want to work, you know? <laughs> I, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's true. So if you want to pay me to, to do a cameo, I'll do a cameo for you. But if I do a podcast, which of course would be called the world according to Chimmel, and it would be real, not like fake reality stuff, but you yeah. know, it'd be real. So, you know, I love and it. And it would be no editing. I don't edit stuff. It is <laughs> yeah. They overproduce stuff. I way underproduce it. <laughs> so. That's great. That's yeah. great. That's a quote of the day right there. Yeah. Well, Tony, thank you again for everything at your yeah. time at WWE and. You, Blake Chimmel, everyone, just you have a great family. Off with the Blake Chimmel. She's going to call me and get, they're calling me Chimmel. <laughs> oh, shit. Well, uh, thank you guys very much. I appreciate it. Absolutely. Chris, uh, we can't see you, but give the people what they want. How can they find Chris? Um, just on Twitter at the Dunniverse. Um, cool. Yeah, nothing special here. No cameos. Not trying to steal Chimios, money from people. Chimios. <laughs> Cheerios. It's not stealing. They're handing it over. There you go. And I'm getting five star ratings. There you go. Chris. I have what? A hundred stars? <laughs> <laughs> oh, Even if we're out of a hundred, that's not bad. <laughs> no, right? That's good. Cool. <laughs> All right, Chris, Tony, thank you again for coming on. You can find us on Twitter at the UW Pod and Instagram at UW Podcast. Peace.